Ladies and gentlemen, Google Kings coming at you with a bit of a different type of video uh, today. Now, we're basically going over exactly how I actually have my sandbox settings. Now, I don't want to waste, you know, any of your time because I know you can just hover your little mouse key or your, your mouse cursor over the, the setting itself just to see what it says. I just want you to be able to see exactly how I have my set because I get a lot of questions, you know, when it comes to a, a couple of varying factors. Um, now, first off, you're going to basically use the uh, custom sandbox, um, and this is one that I, I highly recommend because there's a lot of options I like to mix and match, and I don't like, you know, just clicking on Apocalypse and just going with whatever they want. Um, now, once you actually go into sandbox, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to pick, you know, where you're going to be spawning in at. Now, let's just go with uh, Raven Creek, even though I won't be spawning in. All right, so this is exactly how I currently have my settings uh, for Raven Creek. Now, when you come in, the very first thing, uh, obviously, is your zombie count. Um, that's kind of the, the most critical of everything because this is just, you know, whether you're a beginner, whether you're, you know, really good at the game, whatever the case is, you definitely want to be able to set it as what's going to work best for you. Because um, obviously, if you got like times four population, it can get completely out of control, especially when you have helicopter events and stuff like that. Alrighty, so the very next thing that we're going to be taking a look at is going to be your time setting. Now, this is absolutely critical for you just because it really depends on, you know, like what type of playthrough that you're looking for. Because if you start, let, let's say, in the uh, summertime, there's going to be a lot easier time for you to fish. There's going to be a lot easier, you know, things to find, you know, when you're actually foraging. Um, you know, it's just, it's a lot easier to deal with right from get-go versus if you make it in the wintertime where, you know, like obviously it's going to be colder. You might not have, you know, all the clothing that you need. You're not going to be able to forage. You're not going to be able to, you know, go fishing and stuff. So much different, you know, depending on which type of playthrough that you're looking for. So if you're looking for any kind of, you know, like difficulty and stuff, just kick it more towards that colder side and that'll definitely get you. Alrighty, so the next thing that we're taking a look at is going to be in the world features, and this is basically where you can say, you know, hey, as soon as I start the game, I don't want there to be any water. You know, so basically you can set it how you want to with that. Now, one of the things that I pay particular attention to is the darkness setting. This game can get absolutely brutal if you set it at pitch black, and that's where, you know, like you actually have to take cat's eye, uh, or unless, you know, you have like a, a flashlight or whatever the case is. But I can tell you, Generally speaking, I'll normally keep mine at dark just because it gets pretty damn brutal out there. Now, the next thing that we're taking a look at is going to be the nature setting. And what the, kind of a couple things with this um, is that if you take a look at the rain, um, obviously this is going to be a huge factor just because if you sit out in the rain for too long, you know, basically you're going to get sick and then, you know, that can make you start sneezing and then all the zombies fall in on your head and stuff like that. So you definitely want to pay attention with this one. Obviously, if you're looking at, you know, like having to farm, um, if you don't have a water source around and you have it, you know, set to very dry, you might as well count out, you know, like being able to farm. Now, speaking of farming, you've got farming speed. Now, the thing with farming speed is that you can, if you set it at normal, that stuff will actually take quite a while to to grow up. Um, now, obviously, that makes it a little bit more realistic and stuff like that, because obviously it takes months on end, you know, for you to be able to grow stuff. But that's a lot more micromanagement, and that actually takes away from a little bit of the funness of the game itself. Makes it more realistic, just a little bit less fun. Now, the plant, res plant resilience, um, that's another big one to go with, because... Basically, you're looking at things that can affect, you know, like the, the growth of the plant, you know, like whether it's going to get uh, like a mildew and stuff like that on it. Um, and then that basically stumps the uh, the growth itself. Um, and of course, the last thing is compost time. Um, this is one that obviously, you know, like if you have uh, anything that goes bad, you can just basically throw it into the compost pile. And then that'll basically, you know, come in to, to basically make it a little bit easier for you to grow stuff, you know, using that compost with. Um, so this is definitely, you know, one that not as more critical, but the rainy, uh, or at least the rain setting, um, is kind of a big one for me. And of course, you know, if you want to go with temperature, make it colder, even though you have it set in the winter time, that'll make it even more colder. Alrighty, really quick with the sadistic AI director. Um, this is the thing that's basically uh, kind of in the background that's like kind of shaping your, your gameplay, whether, you know, it kicks off, uh, the, the helicopter or, you know, just any type of meta event, anything like that. So really quick with this, if you use the expanded helicopter uh, mod, um, I will tell you to go ahead and set the vanilla to never um, because the expanded mod is going to basically take over the uh, helicopter event. So you don't want the, the vanilla 
kicking in because that one's going to be directing you at that point but if you're not using that particular mod then you know you can kick it off to sometimes and this is basically you're probably looking at around you know like the 15th of the month um and then from that point on it's just going to be completely random and stuff like that um sleeping events i'm not a big fan of uh the majority of the time i'll actually go with never on sleeping events but you know it's one of those that if you want to go with it go with it Alrighty, with your meta tab, uh, a couple big ones in here. Um, you have time before corpse removed. Um, now this one I would actually set to 72 hours. Um, and this gives you three days after you kill a zombie for it to disappear. That will make a huge difference when you're looking at, you know, like the stability of your game itself. You know, like it's basically got a lot less stuff to track when those corpses disappear. And on top of that, it makes it a little bit easier, you know, like when you're trying to drive down a road and there's not like a hundred corpse in front of you, you know, between you and where you're trying to drive um decaying corpse uh, health impact this is another big one just because you know like this is the stuff where once you get more than 10 zombies in a, a little area it basically creates kind of a, a disease area almost um and that'll actually get you sick so obviously if you set it to low you know you're not going to be as affected as if you had it to high obviously um now the last one this is blood level this is a big one that i constantly get asked about um now i currently have mine always set to ultra gore so whenever i shoot a zombie you know it's spraying blood everywhere um do realize that that will actually affect your uh, your FPS um, because obviously if you have a lot of zombies coming at you and you're shooting them up and they're all spraying blood, that's taking a hit to your FPS. So definitely, you know, like just, I guess, set that one exactly how your, your computer can basically handle it. All right, loot ready. Obviously, this is, you know, like self-explanatory. Do realize, though, that... When you go in, if you're using the Brita weapon mod and stuff, as many weapons as there currently are, as many magazines and clips and blah, 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 and ammo types that are out there, um, do realize that if you have that set to extremely rare, you're probably not going to have an opportunity to be able to find the gun that you're looking for, the ammo type that you're looking for, and an actual magazine for that weapon, you know? So I, I would definitely, you know, be a little hesitant to go extremely rare on that one. It, it's totally possible, you know, obviously... You know, it's all up to you on how you want to have that set, but do realize that there's a lot of factors when it comes to putting, you know, and being able to use a gun. All right, so for your character sandbox options, the big things with this one is you have the XP multiplier, which if you're a brand new player and you want to be able to get to, or at least see what, you know, some of the late game skills uh, will do for you, this is one that where you can actually set the XP multiplier just because, you know, it'll make it a lot easier for you to be able to reach like that level 10 carpentry and stuff like that before you actually end up dying. Um, that's just one of the things, you know, just because I know when you first start out the game, you're going to be dying a lot and you might not ever see those end level uh, skills. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention in here, well, a couple things, um, rear vulner vulnerability. Now, the thing with this is that when you push a zombie, sometimes you might actually miss the push and then when you push through your actual character will like actually like physically go through the zombie and then when he goes to swing at you it then counts your back being exposed um so i would definitely pay particular attention to this if you're brand new to the game probably put that one to low just because a lot of the times where you're going to die is because you got attacked from behind and that little instance where you push a zombie and go through it that's just one of those little like issues that you know they're still fixing as we speak so i would probably you know adjust that one how you want now the last thing i've seen a ton of streamers that are out there right now with multi-hit on if you're a brand new player I would definitely go with multi-hit. This allows you to be able to swing a baseball bat or an axe or whatever the case is and hit multiple zombies. And you can also push multiples at the same time as well. Now, obviously, I never play with this one uh, just because, you know, I got used to, to not having that on. But it's definitely good if you're a brand new player. All right, one really quick thing with the vehicles here. Um, obviously, there's a lot of things you can set however you want. Um, with this particular one, the car damage on impact. Obviously, you guys have seen where I'm driving. I'm reversing with a you know something, I guess, attached to the vehicle itself. It touches a v another like building, whatever the case is, and all of a sudden, my vehicle's flying. Um, that's one of the things you know. Sometimes cars get a little wonky, so I would actually, if you're you know brand new to the game and stuff, I would probably set that to low just because there's a lot of times where you know, you impact on something that just wasn't visible. You know, maybe the, the building that you were going by is like a three-story building and it didn't really cut away fast enough. So, you know, it's really easy to, to basically kill yourself just by driving. I can't tell you how many times I've died just to cars.
Alrighty, we're looking at Zombie Lord now. Now, with this one, um, there's a couple of things in here uh, that I definitely go with all the time, and that's superhuman strength for zombies and, uh, like, basically high toughness. Um, so the thing with the superhuman strength is I don't want to be able to close the door and then have it the, take them, you know, like 10 minutes to be able to get through that door. I want them plowing through objects, like, instantaneously. And on top of that, if they get a hold of you, they get a hold of you, you know. So that's my mistake. This is where, because I use firearms... I want them to have a little bit easier chance to have, you know, basically taken me down. Um, so it kind of levels the playing field. Now, infection mortality, this is a big one because I don't want to have a scratch kill me three days later, you know, because I don't want to have to go through, you know, grinding and blah, 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 and then just have that scratch end up killing me. So this is one that I basically said that if something's going to kill me, it's going to kill me right away. Now, granted, sometimes it'll make you a little bit more frustrated when you're like, bam, you know, like what, what just killed me? Well, you know, it might have been a scratch that eventually would have killed you later on, but it just got you up front. Now, environmental attacks, this is obviously, you know, this is one that you can play by ear. Um, and this is just simply enough, you know, if a zombie bumps, in, bumps into a door, starts banging on it, other zombies hear it, and then start moving towards uh, whatever the sound is. And you'll see, like, a lot of the times, if it's a reinforced window and stuff like that, um, they actually will love banging on those. It just makes a lot of noise. Um, now, the zombie house alarm triggering, this is one I would, it, it depends on how, your play style, because you can actually, you know, start your game, and within five seconds, you're going to hear an alarm, and then you're going to have a bunch of zombies moving in that direction, and as they move, they may trigger other alarms in that city, so I would definitely play that one by ear. Alrighty, so the next thing that we're going with is the advanced zombie options. Now with this, you can see the uh, population multiplier. This is just nothing more than when I click on, you know, uh, insane zombie population. That basically means it has a times four multiplier um, for the amount of zombies out there. That's where that number is coming from. Now, the big one on this entire section that I always get is, do you play with respawn? Now, this is where I basically, you know, or where you can go in and actually disable the whole respawn. Um, so basically just have 0.0, .0 on all three of these. And that just keeps them from, you know, like basically like uh, popping back up after you've killed them. Um, one of the things I wanted to show you with this one that I personally do is the rally group size. Now, rally group size, this is basically saying that if there is a, a ton of zombies, they all clump together. So when I have a zero on the rally group size, it spreads everybody out. Now, that makes it a lot harder for you to have to sneak through stuff because now they're all spread out. But at the same time, you know, you can actually kind of deal with them a little bit easier because they are spread out. You're not dealing with one giant clump having to separate, you know, each zombie for a kill. Um, and the last thing I wanted to show on this one is the follow sound distance. Now, with this one, you know that I use uh, firearms quite a bit. So the thing with that is that you can see that their max follow distance, as far as tiles go, is set at 100. Now, the problem with that is that a pistol can be set at, or like an unsilenced pistol, when you shoot it, is 125 tiles. So technically, you're kind of shortchanging yourself on the difficulty. Um, so with this one, if you set this at, like, let's say 400 that's going to allow them to hear the max distance of any kind of sound that you use, whether it's a horn, whether it's, you know, an unsilenced uh, rifle or anything of that. So with that, just realize that by default, it's set at 100. So, you know, like if you take out a shotgun or, uh, you know, even a horn and a horn, when you honk it, you know, it goes off to what, like 300 uh, tile distance, which is huge. But if you only have it set at 100 kind of shortchanging yourself on the difficulty. So you can definitely be calling in a lot more zombies by letting them actually hear the max distance. Alrighty guys, so that about does it. Now that's basically the gist of how I have my sandbox settings. And of course the big things, you know, the, the respawn and the blood gore. Um, so if you got any questions, anything that I might have skipped over, just let me know down in the comment section below. And as always guys, I definitely want to thank you for stopping by saying, hey, y'all make sure with everything going on out there that you're staying safe and we'll see you on the next one. All right, bye guys.